And we just thank you this morning. And Lord, everyone who lifted a hand, who has a burden that they're carrying, I ask God today that you would please, please God, uh, meet their need this morning. Let them have confidence and faith in knowing that you've heard our prayers and you will come through. And God, it's going to be okay because you're at the helm. We love you this morning, Lord. We give thanks to your name. We praise you, Lord. We lift you up, O oh God. There's none like you in the earth. There's none to be compared to you. You're a wonderful God. And we worship you this morning. Oh God, we thank you, Lord. Let it be with sincerity and from the bottom of our, our hearts, God, that we would say thank you today. And Lord, come in this midst. Come in this service. Oh, deal with us, Lord. Let us feel your love. Let us feel your conviction. Let us be instructed today. Let us be challenged. Let us be guided. Oh God, please let it be that you get the preeminence, Lord. You take the charge. You take the lead. We love you this morning and we worship you. Have your way, God, in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Steve, if you would lead us in some singing this morning. Man, we're going to sing, I never shall forget the day. We haven't sung this song in a while. You remember the day the Lord saved you? Amen. Long years ago, went out in sin. I had no hope, no peace within. Down on my knees in agony, I prayed to Jesus and He gladly set me free. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens of my soul rolled away. It made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. Now I can feel him by my side. My feeble steps, he comes to guide. When trials come, he comforts me. Through faith in him or sin, I have victory. I never shall forget the day When all the burdens of my soul were rolled away It made me happy, glad and free I'll sing and shout it for He's everything to me Oh sinner, come to Jesus now at his dear feet just humbly bow confess to him your every sin he'll save you cleanse you give you peace and joy within i never shall forget the day when all the burdens of my soul were rolled away it made me happy I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. Now I can feel him by my side. My feeble steps, he comes to guide. When trials come, he comforts me. Through faith in him or sin, I have the victory. And I never shall forget the day When all the burdens of my soul were rolled away It made me happy, glad and free I'll sing and shout it for He's everything to me And I never shall forget the day when all the burdens of my soul rolled away, it made me happy, glad, and free. 
I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. Amen. Let's sing Heaven's Jubilee. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise Headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies Do what singing, do what shouting on the happy morning When we meet our blessed Savior in the skies Seems that now I almost see all the saints of death Rising for that jubilee that is just ahead In the twinkling of an eye, change with them to be All the living saints to fly to that jubilee Oh, what singing, no oh, what shouting on the happy morning when we all shall rise no what glory hallelujah when we meet our blessed savior in the sky when with all that heavenly host we begin to sing singing in the holy ghost how the heavens will ring millions there will join the song with them we shall be Praise the Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, no, oh, what shouting on the happy morning when we all shall rise. No, oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the sky. No one singing, no one shouting. On the happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, our glory. Savior in the skies. <clears throat> when with all that heavenly host we began to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing! Oh, what shouting on the happy morning when we all shall rise. <coughs> oh, what glory. <coughs> Hallelujah. Well, that's what it's all about. We're going to heaven. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. It's good to feel the presence of the Lord here. Amen. Uh, I want to say we're glad to have each of you here. I'm glad that you got up, made your way to the house of God this morning. And uh, it's so needful. A lot of times, a lot of times we, we get to thinking, you know, it's all about me. But really and truly, it's not all about me. Uh, it's about me being a blessing to you and a blessing to others. And when you're absent, there's a vacant spot there. So I just want to say thank you for coming and, and uh, filling a pew this morning. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> I mentioned uh, some time back, and I, 
uh, even had some booklets made of what the church believes. And, and it's what it believes from the Bible standpoint. Every bit of it can be backed up with Scripture. But uh, uh, I told you to give some consideration about joining the church if you haven't already joined the church. I'd encourage you, uh, if you hadn't joined the church, to, uh, to make, make a step forward and join the body of Christ. And uh, what you're doing, you're saying, I become a part of this body, this local church, to do a work for God. And every one of us are needed in some area of ministry here in the church. We need, we need folks that have a burden for uh, joining with Brother Wells in greeting people. People need to be, when they come in, that they can feel welcome. They feel like that, hey, folks are glad that I'm here. So there's a ministry there. There's a ministry I, I noticed, uh, went through the church this morning. Uh, there's a, a need for some light bulbs to be changed. We need somebody that would say, you know, I'd love to get involved in some of the maintenance work of the church. The yard needs to be mowed on a regular basis. We need somebody that has a burden for mowing the yard. <clears throat> Not Brother Gary has to come in after he's worked all day and preparing to preach for Sunday, that he has to mow the yard. And I'm not fussing at y'all. What I'm doing is showing you that there's some needs for the body of Christ. Amen. That we join together and do something for God. And every one of us needs a job. We need to be to where that we've got a place of responsibility. Amen. Amen. This is not getting too tight, is it? No. Oh. How many of y'all would be willing to take a, a ministry in the church? Raise your hand where, we, where the Lord can see it. Okay. Um, some of y'all, you had your hearing aids off. I said, how many of y'all would be willing to take a ministry in the church? You'd be willing to do something for the Lord. Okay. Some more hands went up. Let's try it one more time. Uh, Sister Deanna. You get that hand to go this way whenever I say this because you are part of the cook. I know you and I work together cooking. Uh, one more time, how many would join with me in saying, I'm going to be a part of the ministry here at this church? Amen. Raise your hand up where the Lord can see it. Amen. Oh, now that's looking a lot better. Amen. Uh, we need to be, did you know if, if my, we'll just give you an example. My wife came to church Wednesday night. She came to church hurting. She, she wasn't feeling good and, and she was in pain when she came to church. And when church was over, we literally had to pick her up and put her in the car. And I carried her home and uh, we tried to make it, was going to try to make it through the night, but uh, uh, I tried to help her get to the to the bathroom, and uh, she was just crying. Just she was just asking the Lord to take her, that she was uh, she was ready to go. I mean, the pain was that severe. Finally, I told her, I said, "Well, whatever you decide, I'm with you on it." And uh, anyway, she told me that uh, she was ready to go to the hospital, so I called an ambulance and took her to the hospital. Uh, what it was, uh, one of her legs, one of her knees. Is uh, I don't know what what the thing, whether it's a blood vessel busted or or gout or what it is, but anyway, just where she couldn't walk. And did you know her just being to where she had that just one leg with a problem? That's all she's had one leg with a problem. It shut down her whole body. And the body of Christ is the same situation. Uh, if if uh, if we're not careful, we don't see the need that we have to be a part of the body of Christ. You don't, you, the devil hides from you how important you are to the body of Christ here at Souls Harbor Church. But you are important. Now, I'm just telling you this morning, you, you play a big part and uh, your presence is needed. Your encouragement is needed. To be to where that you're not always having somebody to lift you up, but you start lifting up other people. Shaking hands with them. Saying it's good to see you in church this morning. 
Amen? Now, this is some good preaching I'm doing. I know y'all don't realize this, but this is some good preaching I'm doing. Uh, anyway, I probably have said enough, but I, I, want you, I want you to consider joining the church and saying yes. And uh, those hands, I had to prize some of you to get out of your pocket, but uh, you did raise it up. And the Lord saw it, and we're going to try to find something for you to do that would help strengthen your walk with the Lord because... You will be stronger if you're doing something for God. Uh, and I, I need to hush, but I, I need to tell you one other little bit. I preached last week in uh, Brother Josh's church in Missouri, and I made some statements here, <clears throat> and I just went on and developed a message in that direction. I felt like that's what the Lord wanted me to do <clears throat> about, uh, well... Jesus, whenever uh, the disciples, he, he went and saw this woman at the well, and she was, her life was a messed up life. She had had, she had, had five marriages, and she just gave up on marriage and started shacking up with this guy. And Jesus, he took time out of his schedule to come. He said, it's uh, needful, I must go through Samaria. He, he went by for this one woman to help her and to show her the way and to save her. And I, I just thought, how many people are in need of God helping them? But uh, anyway, the disciples, they went to town. I, I, I told y'all they went to McDonald's, but they didn't have a McDonald's then. And got some hamburgers and got some things to eat and brought it back and Jesus was there talking to this woman when they got back. And they said, uh, she left because he had brought conviction, had got a hold to her. And she had left and, and she went to town and she told everybody. She became an evangelist. She told everybody, she said, come see a man that told me everything that I've ever done. And uh, a lot of people were saved. But anyway, uh, Jesus, when they said, come on and eat, Master, he said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. And this meat that he had is that manna from heaven. It's doing the will of the Lord. It's talking to somebody about the Lord. It's inviting somebody to church. Yeah. Uh, I had me a mess of meat just a few minutes ago. There was a lady that I had the privilege to talk to her about her soul, and I gave her a card on how to be saved. Uh, there's a joy comes with sharing Christ. Amen? Amen. And doing something for the Lord. And if you're not involved in that, you're starving that spiritual man. Amen. But I, I appreciate those hands that went up. And the, you, some of you, I never did, did get your hand pried out of your pocket. But I will work on it some more. Amen. At this time, Brother Wells is going to come. We're going to receive the morning tithe and offering. And give you opportunity to give. And it's such a privilege to be able to give to the Lord. He's been so good to us, hasn't he? <clears throat> We're fixing to get out of here. I don't know whether y'all know it or not. But uh, I really believe the rapture's about to take place. Uh, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now that was one city. But God said when... When this whole harvest gets going like Sodom and Gomorrah does, he said that's when the end's going to come. And we're seeing that from a world standpoint right now. So I'm just encouraging you, be faithful to the Lord in every area of your life, and you're giving also. Brother Wells, would you pray over the tithe and offering this morning?
Thank you for your giving, and the Lord will bless you for it. Amen. Good to see Brother West and his family come in this morning. Uh, Brother West, you don't know it, but I pray for you and your family. I try not to miss a day. Uh, we may miss a lot of things down here, but we don't want to miss heaven. Amen. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't say anything. I was going to talk to Brother Gary before church and tell him that uh, next week I'd love to preach. Is that okay, Brother Gary? That would be just fine. Okay. Uh, and the reason I'm, reason I'm telling you now is because I really believe I have something that will help each one of you to make heaven your home. I really do. And, and you're, you're in a battle. The, the Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent, that's us, have to get violent. The violent take it by force. So you've got to take your salvation. You've got to get a grip on it and say, Devil, you're not getting my salvation. You're, you're not getting my life. You're not going to mess my life up. And you're not getting my salvation. I'm going to heaven. So if you can, invite somebody to come next Sunday. Uh, I, believe, I believe I have something that will help you if the Lord tarries till then. I believe I have something that will be a blessing to you. This time we're going to dismiss the children to Children's Church. Brother Steve, you going to sing for us? Worship the Lord this morning, amen. Once I was straying in sin's dark valley, no hope within could I see. They searched through heaven and found a save a poor lost soul like me oh what a savior oh hallelujah his heart was broken on calvary his hands were nailed scarred, his side was riven, he gave his life blood for even me. He left the Father with all his riches. With calmness sweet and serene Came down from heaven And gave his life blood To make the vilest sinner clean Oh a Savior, oh hallelujah, his heart was broken on Calvary, and his hands were nailed scarred, his side was riven, he gave life blood for even me 
Death's chilly waters I'll soon be crossing His hand will lead me Say for And I'll join the chorus In that great city And sing up there for Evermore Don't want a Savior broken on Calvary His hands were nail scarred His side was riven He gave His life's blood for even me No one a Savior His heart was broken on Calvary, and his hands were nail scarred, his side was riven, he gave his life's blood for even me. He gave his life blood for even me. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Steve. <clears throat> oh, what a Savior that loved us and gave his life that we could have life, have our sins put under the blood and make heaven our home. Amen. Well, without any further ado, Brother Gary's going to come preach for us. Amen. Thanks, Dad. <clears throat> Let's sing that chorus before y'all go. Oh, how I love Jesus. I'd like to sing that chorus. I'm going to be preaching today along the lines of loving the Lord. and um, I thought it would be good for us to just express our love to the Lord before we hear the preaching of the Word of God. So uh, why don't you just sing it as a prayer to the Lord today. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. How I love Jesus Because He first loved me And to me You are so wonderful Oh, to me so wonderful oh to me you are so wonderful hallelujah because he first loved me and oh how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Because 
love me. Amen. Are you thankful that Jesus loved you? Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you would please turn to Psalms chapter 39 and verse 1. Amen. I uh, stand with me, if you would, please, for the reading of God's Word. Amen. Psalm 39, verse 1. To the chief musician, even Jedithan, a psalm of David. I said with my, I said, I will take heed to my ways. That I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle. While the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence. And I held my peace. Even from good. And my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me. And while I was musing. The fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. I want to take verse 3 as my text. My heart was hot within me while I was musing. The fire burned. If the Lord will help me today, I want to preach to you on the thought, a love on fire. A love on fire. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Josh Webster if he'd pray and ask God to anoint today. Amen. You may be seated. Contrasting verse 3 of Psalm 39, my heart was hot within me while I was musing, the fire burned. To Revelation chapter 3 and verse 15, the Bible says, I know thy works. The Lord here talking to the church of Laodicea. He said, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, I will, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Amen. Today, I want to just very simply say, the Lord is worthy of a love on fire. He is worthy of a heart that is passionate for Him. You ladies... I know that if you could write down one thing that you would probably desire more than anything else in this entire world, if you're married, I think you would just say, I would love for my husband to love me with a passionate love. I know that there are desires that we have for things. There's desires we have to make it through life. But... A heart was made to love. God gave us the ability to care. To be touched with compassion and empathy. To have a desire to please. To have desire for connection and relationship. God made us to have fellowship with Him. Can you say amen to that? We were created for His good pleasure. And it seems like from all we have read through the Scriptures and personal experience, God did not need us to fulfill His Godness. He did not need us to boost His ego. He did not create us so that we would just be little pawns in His scheme. But He desired fellowship with us. And that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful verse in John 3, 16, For God 
so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The whole story of the Bible is God made man. Man, because of sin, walked away. That's in the first three chapters of the whole book. And from Genesis chapter 3 to Revelation 22, it's a story about God reconciling to man in fellowship with him. Amen. God deserves a love on fire. What puts fire of love out? What puts the fire out of love? The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24 verse 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I preached about this Friday night, and I'm not going to re-preach that message, but I do want to just bring one thought to you. What puts the love out? This could be love in a relationship. It could be love for God. It could be love in, for anything that we love. What, what, what is iniquity? Iniquity is made up of three letters in the original Hebrew or Greek here. Avon, not like the makeup, but Avon. And that, uh, that letter represents the thought of an eye being opened. A bet and that represents a hook being set and anew the idea of multiplying. What does iniquity have to do with putting out love? When your eye looks at things outside of what you should be looking at and you have openness of eyes. Is that not what the devil told Eve? Oh, God don't want you to eat of that fruit because he knows if you eat of that fruit, your eyes are going to be open. And you're going to be just like God. And so God is really wanting to keep you bound. He's really wanting to keep you in darkness. What is the phrase today? Everybody's woke. Everybody has an awareness now. The Bible tells us to learn not the way of the heathen. Amen. There's things I don't want to know. There's things I, I wish I would have never seen. Amen. I wish I would have never uh, experienced the things, many of the things that I've experienced. Iniquity is when an eye gets opened. You're, you're going along, you're happy with your wife. You start working around someone and she seems sweeter than your wife and she's not as needy as your wife and your eyes starts looking somewhere it shouldn't look, Right? Iniquity is when an eye gets opened and then a bet, a hook is set. The Bible tells us, the Lord said, pray, Lord, lead us not into temptation. Oh God, don't let us get tempted. The Bible says every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Right? And when lust hath conceived, that's the hook being set. Right? At that point, there's a gestation period that begins. And there's a baby called sin coming forth. Amen? And then the idea anew of being multiplied. In Genesis chapter 6, it had gotten so bad that the Bible says man's heart was set in him to do evil continuously and it was a collision course, and God had to totally do a reset. But praise be to God, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And gave us another chance. That's what puts fire out. When a couple comes to get married, they think that they will live on love the rest of their days, and all they need is love. But the love that they think they have that is full of emotion and passion, that fades. And then the commitment is what holds the love together. What makes love burn? 
What makes love burn? Number one, time. There is no substitute for time in a relationship. You can say you love and spend no time together, and that love is subject to wane. That love is subject to all kinds of outward influences taking over it. That time could be spent with, over the phone. That time could be spent uh, in, in days of war, writing letters and various things. But time has to be spent in order for love to stay alive. Secondly, proximity. There's no substitute for proximity. When you are in love with someone, you want to be with someone. Amen? People say today, well, I don't have to go to church to to have a relationship with the Lord. And uh, I understand what they're saying. But why would you want to not be around your brothers and sisters? Why would you not want to come together to worship God together? I mean, uh, uh, either you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. And I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven not just because it's a better alternative than hell, but because God is there. And I want to be with God. I want to be in His presence. I desire to have fellowship with Him. I anticipate being around people I love. Uh, We went on a trip and I got to go down to Texas and see some uh, family that I haven't seen in many years. Uh, Some I hadn't seen in uh, a lot of years. And we got to be together and it was with eager anticipation that I had when I heard that they were coming over. Oh, I, I, was, I was excited because I wanted to be in their presence. Amen. I, I thought of uh, when you go to a, a restaurant, why, why do these restaurants spend all the money that they spend? I'm thinking of a couple of restaurants. I'm thinking of like the Cheesecake Factory. How many of you guys ever been to a Cheesecake Factory? Raise your hand. Several of you have. Uh, the ambiance that they try to create. Uh, you go to uh, uh, a, uh, an on the border and all the art, or you go to a Cracker Barrel and all of the old, uh, they, they, they spend all of this money to try and create ambiance, right? And then the ambiance is followed with atmosphere. There's an atmosphere. Uh, There's a place just south of uh, Springfield, Missouri, between Springfield and uh, Branson called Lambert's. How many uh, of you guys ever been to Lambert's? Okay, I see uh, just a few hands. Lambert's is the home of the throne roll. And uh, in that restaurant, they walk around with hot rolls. And if you want a roll, you just raise your hand and they throw one across the restaurant to you. Dead serious. And they feed you out of big old tubs like, like family dinners. They just come by and give you some green beans or some mashed potatoes. And, and it's, a, it's a jubilant atmosphere. It's loud. It's just like, a, just like Thanksgiving dinner except a little wilder <laughs> with the throne roll. And why is that? Because somebody knew that if we can create an atmosphere... We're not just selling food. Right? We're not just selling food. And I want to say to us, brothers and sisters, we're not just selling religion. Amen. Amen. We're selling a passionate love for God. Amen. And it ought to be when you come in the house of God that you raise your hands and you give praise to God. The music. Amen. The fellowship. Everything. Because we're wanting to create an atmosphere where the Lord would want to step out of heaven and come and dwell amongst us for just a little while because He inhabits the praises of His people. And if we can create an atmosphere where God would want to be, oh, that's what I want. Amen. I want the Lord to know I love him. I want the Lord to know I worship him. I want the Lord to know he's number one in my life. Amen. And I can praise him in a truck. I can praise him, amen, in the mountains. I can praise him on the seashore. I can praise him all by myself. But oh, isn't it better, amen, when he said, come and let's worship the Lord together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. 
Amen. I have been to a Broncos game before. And I have been there when the music starts and, and the people are trying to get the crowd to, to raise in their, in their uh, cheering. And, the, and the, uh, they're trying to create atmosphere. Amen. But many years ago, I went to a Promise Keepers event at, at the Broncos Stadium, at Mile High Stadium. And there were 70,000 men in that stadium. And we began to sing like we just sung a few minutes ago. Oh, how I love Jesus. And for the first time in my life, I heard 70,000 people in unison. Amen. I don't know if you've ever driven by, amen, up there in Denver when there's having a Bronco game and the cheer went out and you could hear just a loud noise. Amen. But they said they could hear the words distinctly five miles away of men of God giving praise to God. I cannot explain to you what that atmosphere was like. But the best thing I could relate it to is it must be like what heaven's going to be. Amen. Because God's Spirit came in that place. Amen. I want to create an atmosphere where God would want to be. Amen. There's ambiance. And atmosphere. And wherever you have atmosphere, listen to this. You have anticipation. You see, the reason these restaurants go to all of this trouble to buy art, create ambiance, is because they want you to have a good expectation of what's to come. Did you know the meal, the actual food can be subpar but if the atmosphere is good enough, it'll compensate from some actuality. 